All right, I spent a lot of time on Instagram and the other day I saw some weird roadmap from some Indian page and this, these people were recommending some absurd, like first week you learn HTML and CSS, second week you learn uh, basics of JavaScript, then you learn API calls, then you learn React, then you learn this, Git, blah, blah, blah. I was like, how are these people living with giving such bad advice? And you know, if you're a beginner, you probably don't even know if you should trust these guys because it seems like unreasonable, right? After like three, three months, you should be like job ready. And literally like the advice that they're giving out there is so stupid and it doesn't make any sense. It feels like they have like a random quote generator, you know, that is creating those types of posts. And probably some people are falling for it and then they become frustrated and they quit. And in this video, I want to show you like what is a legit roadmap for a beginner developer. So all the way from HTML and CSS to hired, I want to show you like what I do and how I think about it and then you can make your own mind and see if this actually makes sense, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why I've decided to put this piece here, this piece here and so on and so forth because just in this way you'll be able to create a logical decision for your next 3, 6, 9, even 12 months of study, okay? So let's get into it. All right, the first thing that I want you to do is to learn HTML and CSS. And I want you to spend at least one or two months actually building some sort of website. I have a free program, you can check it out, it's probably the second or third link in the description. And in this program, I'm gonna show you how to build two websites. The first one is the Apple website. I've always mentioned it, hey, if you wanna learn HTML and CSS and you're a beginner, go and replicate the Apple website. And in this free program, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Then try to build a website on your own. Uh, again, in the free program, I'm gonna give you um, a Figma design that you can start replicating so you can have your own website made with your own hands, okay? So spend a month, a month and a half, like really nailing down like the structure of a website, how to use your Flexbox, how to use Paddings, margins, borders, colors, backgrounds. It can be a background image or just a background color. All these things are very important and then you should be fairly confident in using them, right? You don't need to be an expert, obviously, because it takes a lifetime to become an expert in something, but after this month, month and a half, you should be fairly confident with building anything. Like you should be able to look at the website. This is, this is, this is like a good test. Right? If you look at a website and you don't know how to approach building it, that means you are not good enough at HTML and CSS and you shouldn't move on to JavaScript because HTML and CSS are required skills, okay? Nobody cares if you are good at HTML and CSS, but everyone's gonna go ape shit if you don't know HTML and CSS because if you wanna become a front-end developer, guess what? You'll deal with a lot of HTML and CSS. Take a shot for every single time I said HTML and CSS. But this is very important. Again, I have a free program. You can get started with that if you're a complete beginner. Start with that and then you'll have two websites built in a month, a month and a half, okay? Next, JavaScript syntax. I know the gurus out there will tell you the syntax is not important and they are right. The syntax is not important, but still you need to be able to express yourself, right? Coding and programming, it's, it's a way of thinking, right? Is teaching yourself to think like a computer, right? This is like kind of what it boils down to. And once you teach yourself how to think like a computer, then you can solve problems, then you can create applications, etc., etc., and you'll be able to make money. But let's say you are creating that thinking process, right? Then you need to be able to translate it into code that the computer can actually understand, okay? And that's where you need a syntax. And a lot of people just you know, move on, they think they know the syntax well enough. And then when they start solving a problem, they realize, hey, I don't know the syntax and I don't know why I need the for loop. I don't know why I need the function. I don't know why I need the if statement. I don't know why I need the variable. So the syntax is kind of combined with you being able to write something like uh, when someone is prompting you to do it. But it's also like removing that unnecessary thinking, right? Because if you have to think about how to write a function, you cannot concentrate on writing what's gonna happen with that function, okay? Because your mind has something called RAM 
And if your RAM is processing you being focused on writing function, then the name of the function, then the round brackets, then the curly brackets, you won't be able to use that RAM, you'll get exhausted by the time you actually have to solve the problem. So in order to really understand the syntax, you just have to write a lot of syntax. So write code until you get bored of it, okay? You should be able to write functions on the fly, if statements on the fly, variables on the fly. Practice as much as you can. Write 100 variables today, tomorrow 100 functions. Practice using different arguments, different parameters, different function names, etc., etc. Try to abuse every single piece of syntax that you have and, and um, how can I say, stress test it. See if you can use a specific character when you name a variable. See if you can do that to really internalize how to write something with JavaScript, okay? Then we need to get into manipulating the DOM. So here, this work can be very, very light. It can be something like creating a dropdown. So you select some sort of button and then when you click on it, some list of things shows up. Doesn't have to be extremely pretty. It doesn't have to be extremely complicated. Just basic stuff that you see on a daily basis when you are interacting with a website or a web app. A drop down, a search bar, a model, uh, a hamburger button. Things like that. Changing the text in a paragraph with JavaScript. Things like that. It doesn't have to be crazy. If you, if you learn a concept, try to go, you know, uh, balls to the wall with it. You know, try to abuse that concept until it really gets ingrained in your thinking and you don't have to think about it, okay? As you can see, like all I'm trying to make you think about right now is to repeat stuff as much as possible so you don't have to think about it. We want to get to that level where you don't think about stuff, you just do it naturally. And to get to that point, you just need to flex your thinking muscle by practicing a lot and by always questioning why do I need this? How can I use it better? Why it was created, etc., etc. You go back to the first principles. Um, mindset. If you don't know what that is, feel free to Google it after and it's a very, very great model of thinking. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is or are the arrays and objects. Literally everything you will do as a front-end developer, I mean not literally everything, but like 90% of the stuff you will do as a front-end developer is going to involve an array or an object in some way or another. If you are on YouTube right now, you should be on YouTube. If you look on the right, I guess on the right over here, you will see recommended videos, okay? What's that? Well, it's an array of objects. Each video is an object, right? This video is an object. It has a user, that's a property. It has a description, that's a property. Um, it has a number of likes, date published, all those things. Those are properties from an object. Then if you look underneath this video, you will see comments with people calling me crazy and that's an array of objects as well. And then replies, that's an array that's part of the comment object, right? So as you can see, we have this everywhere. If you go on the YouTube main page, what you'll see, an array of recommended videos. If you look at the subscription list on the side, or I guess here, what you'll see, an array of objects. It's not that crazy, but so many people forget about this and they don't mention in their courses like how the theory applies you know with the practice right so focus a lot on understanding arrays and one exercise that they give to my students is to go on mdn and then study all the array methods you don't know to you don't need to know them by heart but i would recommend you to try to reproduce them in this way you'll get familiar with them and then you'll practice algorithms okay because thinking you know solving what those array methods are doing it's like algorithm thinking right so you are killing two birds with one stone then you need to build the staple javascript apps what are the staple javascript apps the calculator to do app and the pomodoro these are the ones that i give to my students and again don't put those in your portfolio those are just for you to learn how to use your data structures properly okay why? Well, when you're building the to-do app, that's an array of objects. When you're dealing with the Pomodoro, that's, you know, using objects and timers, for example. So 
I believe those apps are very important. That's why I recommend them to you and that's why I show them to people in my program and I ask them to build them because they will teach you a lot about JavaScript. And then once you're done with this, then you're ready to go into React. So with React, what I'm actually gonna recommend you again is what I'm doing in my program as well. Go to the docs, read the docs, get familiar with it and see if React seems like it's going to help you. If you feel like it's not going to help you, then that means you don't know enough JavaScript. So you need to go back to revisit your arrays, your objects, your event listeners, your, you know, all that stuff that is related to manipulating the DOM. Revisit that, rebuild stuff, and then go back to React because React is made to make your life easier. And if you don't feel like it's gonna make your life easier, that means you haven't built complex enough projects. Now, as you are learning how to do stuff the React way, one thing that I'm gonna recommend you to do is to focus on building the craziest to-do app you've seen in your life, you know? I'm not gonna say more about that. It's up to you what that means, but that's what I'm doing again with my clients. Then you need to learn routing and using uh, other external endpoints, you know? So making requests to an, uh, to an endpoint, like learn about promises and stuff like that. Uh, making pages. You know, so whenever you click, let's say, on a user, on a sidebar or a, on a route, on a sidebar, you're gonna be redirected to a different page and then you'll see something different there, right? So imagine if you are on YouTube right now, if you click on another video, the URL changes, that means there is some sort of routing happening in there, right? So this is a very important part of like being a front-end developer and you should be learning, to, should be learning it. It's gonna take you like one, two days max to learn this stuff, in my opinion. If you do it right, it shouldn't be extremely complicated. If you remember the 2080 principle, we don't want to learn everything. We want to learn just a little bit so we can become productive with the thing that we've learned. And then with time and with experience, we'll pick up more things along the way. Okay. Then once you know routing, once you know how to use uh, APIs, once you know React, once you know JavaScript, HTML and CSS, then it's time for you to build a one three months project okay and if you don't know what project to build i have again a link in the description for that but basically what you're going to do is you will spend a lot of time building one thing one massive application and the reason why i need to build one massive application is because you need to gain experience if you build let's say 10 small projects you'll only gain exposure you'll only gain experience once you are exposed to the same thing multiple times and then experiencing problems, bugs, refactoring, things of that nature. Because if you are working on like a 10 file project, you won't have big problems. Like you cannot, it's impossible. But if you work on a project that has, let's say 100 components and I don't know, 1000 files, I'm just throwing numbers out of my ass. The difficulty of that project is going to become exponentially more difficult, right? I hope it makes sense. But you want to work on something for a long period of time. Why? Once you get a job, do you think you'll be working on a project for one, three days? Or do you think you'll be working on a project for months or years? Obviously the latter, right? So you want to start experiencing how that feels by yourself for a few months. Um, so yeah, that's that. And the last thing before you go ahead and get hired, in my opinion, is to build a team project or to work with a team on a three to four months project. So you've built this project by yourself for three months. Now it's time for you to work with a team for like three months to learn how to use Git properly, right? If you are using Git by yourself, if you heard your favorite influencer telling you to use Git or if you've been through Code Academy and in the first section of the program they teach you like you should be using git well you're not going to use it that well you know you're going to have exposure to it but you're not going to have experience with it because git is made for a team of people to work together right so you need to learn how to speak your mind in a team how to be onboarded how to do onboarding how to understand tickets how to estimate your work how to collaborate with other people and the reason why this is important is because you will be doing this at work that's the first thing. So you'll be able to hit the ground running. That's a very big one. And then in the interview, when these people will ask you questions like, what was a stressful moment as a developer? 
right? You don't need to make up stories, right? You don't need to make up stories about your bullshit job where your manager threw plates in your head because you forgot to do something. You don't need to do that. You can actually talk about a specific thing that your coworker pissed you off with when you were building said project. So again, very simple process, not easy. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence once again. It's very simple. And I hope you understand why I chose these pieces in this order. Uh, it's because I've seen it working over and over and over again, and it makes sense. And this is how you would be going about it at work. So if you want to be a really good developer, you need to know to have your skills, your hard skills. You need to be able to build applications to solve real world problems. And you need to be able to work in a team. Have I said that? I hope so. So you need to have soft skills. And these are the things that I work with, with people in my mentorship program. So again, I'm selling this stuff and ask yourself, will this process help you get a developer job faster? Yes or no? If the answer is no, okay, don't need to watch me anymore. If the answer is yes, you have to apply it properly. You need to get feedback, guidance, all this good stuff. So if you want a streamlined process that will help you get that first developer job in 12 months, I, I guess, 18 months, however long it's gonna take you, I'm gonna work with you, apply for a call, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this thing works. If you have any questions, I'm gonna answer them. Uh, again, no pressure. If you wanna do it properly, you know what you have to do. Peace.